Hello and welcome to Bone Matters. Today we're going to be talking about DEXA bone density scanning and I'm in discussion with Jill Griffin who is works at the ROS and is a consultant radiographer. Welcome Jill. First question, what is DEXA? So DEXA is an x-ray test that we use in hospitals to help measure how much bone mineral or how much mineral there is in our bones. And we use that measurement to figure out um, how strong your bones might be and what your risks of breaking bones might be. And we can use that measurement also to decide whether a treatment might be beneficial for you. And how often would you have a scan? So how frequently you would need a scan is all down to how, how frequently you would benefit from having a scan. So that might be three years. It might be five years. It might be you might never need a scan again. It all depends entirely on your particular clinical risks, your history, the medication you might be taking and the measurement that we take at the very first DEXA scan. But too frequently is not helpful. Is that right? Well, that's right. So we can't, because of the way DEXA works, it's using x-rays um, and the way the bone density changes in our body is quite slow. So if we were to scan you two weeks apart, we wouldn't be able to see any change. If we really want to see changes in your bone density, we need to wait at least um, a couple of years so that we can measure that change in your bone density. Tell us about what happens when you have a bone density scan. So when you come for your bone density scan appointment, you will be met by a radiographer or a support worker and they're going to um, ask you some questions to make sure they've got the right person for the right scan. Um, so they'll ask you about your, um, your date of birth, ask you to identify your, your address. And then in the scan room, you might be asked to get changed. We don't like to see any metal um, from the tops of the, the bottom of the shoulder down to the hips, and that's because that interferes with the scan. So if you've worn clothing that has any metal work in those areas, we might ask you to change into a hospital gown. But if you come well prepared with no metal, then we won't ask you to change. We might also ask you some questions from a questionnaire. This is help to help us decide um, what your risks are for breaking bones and what your history is. So we might ask you some questions about your family history of hip fracture. We might ask you about whether you've had some fractures. We might ask you about any medications that you're taking, how long you've taken them for. Um, so a whole bunch of questions to help build a picture of what your risks might look like. And then when you have the scan itself, we'll weigh you and measure you beforehand. And that's to make sure that we're inputting into the scanner the right parameters or the right um, information to help the scanner get the best um, scan from you. We will then ask you to lie on the scanner on your back with a pillow under your head. And as the mattress is typically maybe an inch or so thick. It's, it's not completely rock solid. And the scanner arm passes over the top of your body. So it's fixed height. It doesn't come down, doesn't come down onto your body at all. And it will go over your head a little bit, but it will come back again. So it's not enclosed at all. And we'll also ask you to raise your legs onto a block. So this is to get your legs just up um, onto this cushion so that we can measure the spine better. So yeah, what that does when we raise your legs, it flattens the spine against the bed and we can get a really good image through the spine so we can get some good measurements. And then when we do a hip scan, we'll ask you to put your legs out straight and we'll also ask you to turn your feet in so that we can get a really good clear image of the hip joint properly so that we can make measurements there. And that whole process um, takes about 15 minutes from when we've met you and had a first conversation with you to when the scan is complete. And what's great about DEXA is we'll stay in the room with you because the, the X-ray dose, the radiation is so very low that we can stay right there with you. And I think that's really reassuring to a lot of people. So does a DEXA bone density scan tell us how strong our bones are? 
So it doesn't directly tell us how strong our bones are or how likely we might be to break a bone in the future. What it does is adds a piece of the jigsaw puzzle um, to that. It's a really good indicator of how strong our bones are. And because it's a measurement, we can monitor changes within our bones with that. But it's a whole um, jigsaw puzzle of other factors. So our family history, medication we might be taking, our genetics, all sorts of things build up that big picture that tell us um, more about um, whether we're likely to break a bone. And we often hear about a T-score. Uh, what, what is a T-score? So a T-score is a way of um, levelling the playing field when we are looking at DEXA results. So we get a number out of the scanner, but it doesn't mean anything until we compare it to a population. So the T-score is when we compare your bone density measurement to a, a young adult population. This is the best our bones has ever been. So it helps us understand how much bone density you have lost since you were a young adult. And that's really helpful because um, we can use that in any patient, any person, and we know exactly how far away from that young adult um, area that we, we measured from. And presumably the lower you are compared to that average, the weaker your bone is likely to be. That's presumably what it's based on. That's absolutely right. So, if you, so the World Health Organization set this benchmark um, that um, this T score of minus two point five that people hear a lot about, and that's where the World Health Organization said this is likely to be at the point where your bone density is low and you are more likely to have a fracture. And the further away you get from zero, um, minus minus two, minus three, the more likely your bones are to be slightly weaker or more weak and and increase your risk of breaking bones in the future. And how low is low? We often get asked how low can it go? So what do you see when you're scanning, Jill? Well, typically I see patients um, ranging from plus one to minus three. That's kind of the typical range that I will see in my routine clinical practice. It's really unusual to see somebody at minus four or minus five, but it does happen. And all that means is that their bone density is just lower than that peak bone mass, that, that population, and their risks are slightly greater. doesn't mean to say that they're going to... Um, cough and break every bone. Um, not at all. It depends on so many other risk factors and so many other things like their age and drug treatments, all sorts of things. And we hear this word osteopenia. What, what does that mean? So osteopenia is the medical term we use to describe when bone density is, is lower than um, the average. Um, so, for an example, um, it's a bit like the word alopecia. It's a medical term we use for hair loss. It doesn't mean that you're bald. It just means that you are losing. Your hair is becoming thin. So that's that's an analogy um, that we like to use to describe osteopenia. Um, but, you know, it's, it's very normal for most of us um, to have osteopenia as we get older. So um, about a quarter of us will have osteopenia or have that low bone density at the age of 50. A quarter of women age 50 will have a low bone density. Um, and conversely, when we get to 80 years old, um, half of the 80 year old women will have osteopenia and half of the 80 year old women will have osteoporosis. This is as a result of that normal decline in bone density as we age. Can you see a fracture when you on a on a DEXA scan if if there was one? There are clues um, in the standard DEXA scan that um, a skilled um, reporter might spot for a vertebral fracture or a spinal fracture um, to do with how big the vertebra is when we've measured it, whether, whether we can see a change in shape. But it's not definitive. It really isn't. But there is another scan that we can use um, with some DEXA scanners called a vertebral 
adult fracture assessment, and that's called a VFA, where we can take a sideways image of the spine. So we're looking at the body sideways on, and we can measure the vertebral bodies to assess if they've lost height and if there is a fracture. But it really isn't, isn't perfect. Um, it uses science and algorithms and measurements to figure out if that vertebrae is likely to be fractured. But um, there was still need some confirmation on some of those um, scans with a plain x-ray or another another x-ray test to confirm the presence of those fractures and the severity of those fractures. And just finally on that one, a GP is likely to refer you if they think you have a spinal fracture for an ordinary x-ray, is, is that right? That's right, if, if they if there's, there's risk factors or there's, there are symptoms and signs of vertebral fracture um, in, some, in a patient, then a plain x-ray is the first line um, of, to, of investigation to see if there's a, a vertebral fracture there. Thank you, Jill. Lots of useful information about DEXA bone density scanning.